1979 and 1980, they were the best years of his social life. He's been divorced for 13 years, but he says that he wants to get married real soon. Please welcome John Duvall. Cecilia, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's down around Fort Knox, isn't it? Uh, it's about 30 miles as a crow flies south of Fort Knox. Okay. What, what was so special? It said 1979, 1980. They were the best years of your social life. What was so special about uh, that? That was when disco rang supreme disco. in Southern California. <laughs> and Are you a big discoer? Big discoer. I had a dance partner. We had, you did? Uh, uh, she was about uh, 10 years older than I was. She had her own boyfriend, yeah. but uh, which made it kind of nice because we would go out there and really do our thing and had her little costumes on. Had costume? Exactly. What kind of costume? Uh, I had a, like a tuxedo uh, shirt uh, with uh, tuxedo pants and suspenders, and then uh, my dance partner had a nice disco dress. And uh, we would do her thing, and she would go sit with her boyfriend. And then this was what was so great about 79 and 80. The girls would now come over and ask me to dance instead of having it the other way around. Oh, sure. They saw you were good, probably. I, I made them all feel like Ginger Rogers. And they loved me for it. They, they, they loved me so well, I increased my dating about maybe five to ten times a week. Really? I picked it up very much. Well, now, what happened to your social life after disco took a dive? Well, after disco, uh, you know, the country western scene came he in. You just changed with music. Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, country western's in. Take off the sequin vest and pop into your cowboy boots. It was, I couldn't keep up with the steps, I don't think, on that. Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really like it, Chuck. Didn't I did, like Because disco was so sweet and the way we turn and it's touch dancing, and this was all, hey, jerk them around, cowboy. And I didn't like that. I, in fact, I get sore arms from dancing with some of the cowgirls. And so I didn't like that. <laughs> Basically, what I've been doing the last couple of years. Waiting for disco to come waiting back. Waiting for disco to come back. <laughs> Uh, playing disco with my thumb. Well, let's take a look at the tapes of John Sonny. I remember you're going to vote, okay? First, there was Tony. She enjoys dancing and woodworking. She's been divorced for four years, and she has a five-year-old son. Now, she thinks the best thing about being single is having her own bathroom. <laughs> she says that men are a constant source of surprise. And here's what she means. Someone who seems like they'd be very dull on a date turns out to be very exciting. Some that you think would never be interested in, in a small child become very attached to my child it's it's always new and it's always different all right next it was lynn she admits that she talks too much she says that she'd like to get married so that she can stop having blind dates and start having children here's how <laughs> lynn likes to be treated i want to be taken seriously definitely you know not think because i'm female and i have different anatomy that i have different feelings or different emotions than they do. But um, if they want to be a gentleman, that's, o that's okay. If it makes them feel comfortable, I don't demand it. You know, I don't have to have anybody open my door. Okay, and finally, watched Ellen. She's originally from Richmond, Vir Richmond Virginia. <laughs> she enjoys going to museums. Says that she wants a man who's uh, attractive and smart as she is. Here's what she doesn't want. I don't want him to be an egotistical person. I'd rather have somebody that was more interested in, in things in his life than his own life. In other words, like maybe his uh, hobbies or, you know, things that he does rather than himself. I don't want the guy that's always pulling, taking the mirror and going like this while he's driving. Okay. Let's look at all three women again. First is Tony. She's 36. She's a high school teacher. Lynn works in uh, the construction industry. and She's 33. And Ellen's 34. She's a sales rep for a textile company. The audience, you met John. Seen his three choices. I know a lot about him. Who would you fix him up with? All right. Audience has made its choice. We're out of time, so we're going to find out who John picked and hear everything that happened on that day tonight. Oh. We're going to find out tomorrow, though. That's our show for today. I'm Chuck Woolery. I hope all your dates tonight are good ones. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. People always ask me how they can get on Love Connection. It's a lot easier than they think. Now, if you're over 21, just call this number right here and have a free date on us. Now, how bad can that be? This is Gene Wood speaking for Love Connection. Chuck Woolery's wardrobe, furnished by Pierre Cardin. Thank you.
Today, you'll meet John. He always recites poetry to his dates. Yesterday, the audience voted on which of these three women would be best for him. Today, you'll hear who John chose as his date. And you'll meet Jan. The audience chose the date for her, and it didn't work out. Today, we'll hear about her date with the man she chose. Now, here's our host, Chuck Woolery. started by meeting our first guest. He's originally from Cecilia, Kentucky. He's been divorced for 13 years, but he says that he's uh, ready to remarry. Says that he came to Love Connection because he didn't like the women he's been meeting. Please welcome John Duvall. Hi, hey, John. Welcome back. Have a seat. Well, John, what's, uh, what's wrong with the women you've been meeting? Well, I'm still, uh, you know, meeting some women at bars and places like that. Yeah. And they seem to be a lot different than they did back in the, uh, you know, the early 80s and the late 70s. They're more cold and callous and, and uh, in fact, it seems like they're more ugly. Why do you think that is? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, it's, it's really hard to say. Maybe uh, I could be getting older, too, and uh, maybe the women I was dating before that were younger are getting older, too, and uh, mm. we're all getting older. What sort of poetry do you recite on your dates? Well, I... Do you write this yes, poetry? Yes, mm, uh, this poetry is my own, and I write it. And uh, normally on a date, uh, if I recite the poetry, I'll recite a poem about myself. Just let the girl know what I'm like. And it's like a self-portrait poem. Then if, uh, like I say, if I like the girl, yeah. then uh, I'll recite her a poem that I wrote uh, to one of my last loves which was quite a long time ago. To one of your ago. last loves. Mm -hmm. I don't mention her name or anything like that, of course. You don't say, to Helen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll leave it out. I do have one poem that I have a blank in. I could put up girl's names in there. Oh, shit. But I don't do that. Oh. Let's bring everybody up to date on what happened yesterday. Now, we showed the audience John's three choices. They voted on which one they thought would be best for him, and we're going to take a look and catch you up to date. First, there's Tony. She enjoys dancing and woodworking. That's Tony. Then Lynn, she says that uh, she'd like to get married so she can stop having blind dates and start having babies. <laughs> Ellen says that uh, she wants a man who's as attractive and smart as she is. Now, the audience vote was recorded yesterday. We're going to get to that a little bit later on, but right now, John's going to remind us who he chose. Who'd you pick? Chuck, I chose Ellen. I chose Ellen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's meet her right now. Let's say hello to Ellen Gulski. Gillespie, I'm sorry. Ellen Gillespie. Hi, hi, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. How are you? Fine, thank you. Well, just uh, make yourself at home back there, okay? okay? And uh, you can tell me about the date. I went over uh, to pick Ellen up, yeah. and uh, she invited me in. And uh, I go, uh, you know, into the house right there, and she looked very nice. The beautiful you? blue eyes. Yeah. Well, what she corrected me to say, turquoise eyes. <laughs> very, very nice body, <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, Very it, nice it, it was, it was <laughs> <laughs> let's say every, let's put it, everything, we're, uh, we're in the right places, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. That's Nothing good, Justin. <laughs> Both the eyes. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I get in, so we've got to uh, give her a chance to put the uh, roses in uh, water, and she had to water some of her other plants, so I kind of went on a little tour of her house. Uh -huh. And we get into this one room, and she opens up the door, and I'm noticing some of the art that she does. She's a, she's a fantastic artist. Is she? Nice paintings. This one painting, though, was, we're talking life-size male nude. And I'm thinking, now, I mean, you know, am I here in the nude somewhere else right now? You know, I don't know. And, uh, in fact, she I said... maybe she, you'd be thinking, well, she want to paint you. I, well, I don't know. I don't know if I could uh, meet up with this nude. Uh, she, she's a very good artist. And, uh, I mean, we're talking detail in some areas, if you know what I mean. <laughs> six or seven hours posing this one uh, guy. A lot of hair under the arm. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> who, who was the model for this particular painting? Ellen? Well, I went to an art school in uh, Brentwood, and it was just one of the art, uh, the models that they have at the art school. But I guess I exaggerated some, some things in certain spots. <laughs> then I, you know, I'm really getting a like her a lot now. And I'm thinking, you know, it's about time for the you-know-what. The poetry. Oh. <laughs> Not exactly the first thing that 
uh, not the first thing that bounced into my mind. I John laughing at that. I'm sensitive, remember that. No, I, I realize, with all due respect. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so uh, I recite a, a couple of poems, one about myself, and then that one special poem that I t referred to earlier. That has the blank in the middle of it? No, not that no. one. No. What did you think of his poetry? Oh, it's beautiful. It's warm and sensitive, and uh, he's an excellent poet. Hmm, boy, a painter and a poet here. I can't <laughs> believe it. Okay, well, so what happened next? Okay, well, we leave there, and uh, we caught something to eat, and then we uh, went back to her place, and uh, she invited me in, and I had to get my... Uh, I had had a, left a jacket right there, and yeah. it happened to be in her bedroom, so... Obviously, I had to go get my jacket, and uh, got my jacket, and we got back to the door. And uh, so far, all we've really done is maybe hold hands, because we don't want to rush these good dates. And uh, so I said, well, I'll give her a little peck on the lips, you know. And a little peck on the lips got a little bit more, a little bit more. And this jacket's really getting heavy on my arm, so it kind of falls to the floor. And uh, just so happens there's a chair there, because you get tired if you stand up very long. So we kind of sit on a chair, and we're still kissing. And we thought, well, this has been such a nice time. Maybe it's time to cool it. And that's basically when the date ended. It was a, uh, we both agreed. That's nice. I like it. How would you sum up this date, Ellen? Well, when I came to Love Connection, I was looking for uh, a handsome, intelligent man that was ambitious, and I, I found one. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> Want to see the audience for you? Yeah. Let's see how good they were. I think it's Vic Tony. 51%. <laughs> Sorry, Ellen, you came in second. But if you want to take the audience's advice and take Tony out, you know, that's, that's the one we'll pay for because that's who they suggested. If not, you're on your own. You can do what you want. I hope it's quite obvious by now that I would very much like to go out with Ellen. Actually, again. it is rather <laughs> obvious. I just <laughs> have to do that. Well, are you on? Oh, yes. Well, come on in, John. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, sharing your date with us. Thank you. And we're going to come right back with another couple. Hang on.